This is code.org. And congratulations, you are a salesman. So you being a salesman, we have a few houses to visit. How many different ways can you visit all of them? Well, I'll start us off. Zoop and zoop, zoop, zoop. That's obviously going to be one of our paths. Okay, well, what's another way to visit all these guys? Here, 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 and then if I do need to return, here. And then let's see, are there other ways to visit all the houses? Well, yes, I could go instead of down here. What if I go jupe up here and down here and so on and so forth? Right. We can get through this, but there are a bunch of ways just to visit four houses. Well, what if we have a bajillion? How many different ways could we get to all of these? Right. There's so many different patterns of which house to go to first and next and so on and so forth. And that's the basis of, well, the traveling salesman problem. OK, so that's what we'd be looking at. Prompt what you need to know to determine the best path. Distance. Right. So if we do add into this distance, it would enable us to understand which path might be ideal rather than just looking at randomly how to go f from one to another. Now, what if we had a billion places like I was saying? How could you determine? Well, that being said, this is known as the traveling salesman problem. Every new place to visit, the number of options for possible paths increase factorial. And before I lose off the deep end with that terrifying number, what's factorially? Math is fun because math is fun. And I actually used to say, uh, what is it? Well, factorial function, explanation point, where that's the negation operator in CS, but that's fine, says to multiply all whole numbers from the chosen number. So four would be four times three times two times one, seven is seven times six times five, doop, 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 right? So on and so forth. So you're multiplying it by every number less than it all the way down the line. So for every new place in the traveling salesman problem, it's a, you're going to, it increases factorially, right? So you have to multiply every number together down the line. And that's why with just 10 houses, we get over 3 million options of ways we could visit those homes. Factorial fun. Now, that's just with 10. Think if you had the entire country to visit. It is clear that this would become rapidly impossible to calculate. Well, not impossible, but immensely uh, computationally taxing to figure out how and which ways would be best to visit every home in the United States. And welcome to heuristics. Heuristic comes into play because it's, well, like it says here, it's good enough. What will work? What will solve the problem? We will be sacrificing speed to some degree. I mean, we will be sacrificing accuracy and precision. We will be gaining speed. So kind of the shortcut way, how good can we do? How rapidly? Because computers, you would not need to spend that much time or want to for every tiny route. You might spend that amount of time on a computer, which could be days, weeks, years, it depends on the problem and the computer, and it would only save you minutes in life, right? Maybe the other answer, the best, the heuristic answer would certainly be good enough compared to going through every tiny detail. So navigate to level two, check. Try to find the best path to visit all nodes. Write down a path for a heuristic for choosing a good path. Note, your heuristic may not always find the best path, but it should be close enough. Now, to tackle this, since we're going to be doing a uh, taking, since I'm going to take a heuristic approach, I'm going to see, hmm, whatever's closest to my current point, that's when I'm going to try to solve this, right? Because we already looked at how many times it would take to actually figure out an exact solution. So whatever's nearest to my point, it looks like I'm going to think this one. So I'll go with that. OK, now, if I hover over it, notice it shows the numbers. So I can kind of see the distance that must be closest. All right. Now, what's closest to this one here? Uh, 103. Yep. 103 it is. What's closest to this? 87, 67. You can notice, though, how this might not be an optimal solution, because at some point I'm going to have to go way back down here. But regardless, what's closest to this? 87 or 78, 78. What's closest to this? This guy. There we go. Must be that. There we are. Boom. And now we have to go way down there. So that's what I'm getting with mine. And what I did is at each point, I just went to the closest point. Let me take a look at our activity guide here. So in the classroom, we would be filling out something else. But all right, 
navigate the level, try the best path to visit all the nodes, write down a heuristic plan for choosing a path below. I'm going to do a few. So I said uh, closest to the current uh, dot. Okay, so that's one of mine. I don't like the font color. That makes it look weird. Oh, well, that's the color they choose. Okay, now let's see. What else could you do? And again, this is just trying to think of ways that might get us a good enough solution so we don't have to analyze everything. Well, this time I'm going to go to the one furthest down. Okay, so I guess that's this first. What's next furthest down? That way I don't have to. When I got to the end, I was way up here and I had to go all the way back down. So I don't want to do that. So this is furthest down, furthest down, furthest down, furthest down, and this, boom, boom. And these are all heuristic approaches because I'm trying to guesstimate. Obviously, that one wasn't as good, right? The last one was 1,200, but what did I do? Um, uh, always choose dot furthest down. Okay, so these are all heuristic approaches to a situation. So navigate to level three on Code Studio. Okay, test your heuristic three different on three different levels. Oh, okay. So I have two here. Closest dot, furthest down. So I'm gonna go ahead and navigate. I guess I could have clicked finish, but regardless. Oh yeah, and this is gonna randomize it. Awesome. Let me test out my good enough solution, right? And as we were saying with the traveling salesman, it would take a bazillion different analysis to see how many options you have here. So we're trying to figure out a method of getting a good enough solution to make this somewhat more reasonable. Okay, so I'm gonna try my first one closest to the current dot. Current dot, boom. Okay, now what's closest? This guy or this guy? That guy for sure. Now what? That. And I can already see here, now I'm going to have to make this huge leap. Oop, that. Mm, that's closer by one. Boom. Okay, so that gave me 99. So 99. Brute force is just random guessing, right? It's no longer a pattern. So let me hit reset. Um. Just what do I think is going to be a better plan here, I guess. You're just kind of guessing. Ooh, that's not good. So 15. All right, let's see if I can do better. So I start here. I'm definitely going to go here first. And then this. This, 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 this. And this looks closer. So I'm going to go boop, 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 boop. Ooh, 11.31. And again, this is without any solution at all. I'm just trying to guess. All right, let me try one more of these, see if I can do better. What if I start up here, maybe? Because these are further away from everything else. Now I have to jump all the way over here, and now I'm just going to go down. And again, this is brute force. There's not something I can vocalize. Wow, that was pretty close to my heuristic, but not quite there. Okay, so, and 105. All right, let's try a new level. And again, my heuristic, I said closest dot, right? So I guess I'll get rid of this one. I just wanted to show you that there were other ways to do this, but the one I'm using is this closest dot. Here I am, boom, 72. Okay, click, 82, 82 it is. That one, that has to be it. That's gonna be it, that's gonna be it. Uh, I need to go this way, that way, that way, that way, and that way. So 95, uh, 951, I mean for my heuristic, and now let's reset it and see if I can just randomly get better. All right, ooh, 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 boom. Brute horse hacking is a thing too, by the way. They have password generators. They just try every word in the dictionary to guess a password, and they randomly add letters. I'm just gonna tell you random stuff about computer science. Um, the most common password is the word password, or password one, two, three, four, five, six. They're really easy to guess. Anyways, there we are. Let's try again with a brute force method. I don't know, down here, again, just randomly clicking, honestly. 14, okay. Okay, so brute force, you can see with this type of approach to something, right? With no strategy, you're just saying, hey, go for it, is what the computer would have to do, and it would be overwhelmed by the amount of possibilities okay so wow that was not great let's try a heuristic on this one this is closest that guy 103 91 
That one's closest. It has to be that. That guy won. Okay, so that's for my heuristic strategy. All right, now let me do a brute force. And brute force, again, it's just literal random chance, right? I'm just seeing if I can do better by clicking. Well, 1500 isn't. And that's what, uh, well, like I said, brute force hacking with passwords is. They grab a dictionary program and they run every word in the dictionary and they slap random letters on it. This is a public service announcement to have a difficult password. Boom. Okay, well, that one was 1251. But you get the point here, right? So obviously having some strategy, some heuristic is such an improvement, a drastic one compared to brute force. How did you create your heuristic? All right, let me just sum this up. Yep, do this, okay? How do you create yours? Now, keep in mind, this one is a possible one. See if you can do better, and you can, right? Maybe just doing the closest dot, you're only looking out one path away, right? So what I could have done, and I'm just throwing stuff out here, but you could do better than me easily, right? So instead, what if my heuristic was the next two closest? So I can see the numbers, right? So right now, let's see, the next closest one would be 77, but what would be closest to that? Hmm, well, it looks like this would be, okay? So maybe I wanna add up those totals. So I'm gonna guesstimate 77, and then however much this is, so that would be 140 in the end. But then think about the backtracking here, right? Because now I have to go down and then back up. Your heuristic can be improved upon what I am doing. I just did say, hey, look at the closest one and go for it. Or maybe you want to go to the farthest away one first and work your way backwards, right? Or maybe you want to go by what's lowest or highest on the screen or only do one side of the screen first. All of these are heuristic methods and there are particular strategies that are methods for solving equations that might be per not be perfect, but these guesses can considerably lower the uh, taxation on a computer's resources. Limiting down the amount of data being processed means, yeah, you might not get a perfect solution, but you're going to get a solution so much more rapidly, and it will be a good solution because it's a computer doing still a ton of work that it's completely usable and we don't have to spend all day looking at 10 houses and the million ways that we can have Santa visit each of them. So really try to understand how important it is that these good enough solutions, well, they're good enough. Sometimes you don't need perfection with a computer and you'll really see that as we get further into programming. Let me just double check here. Oh, there they go, there's takeaways, traveling salesman is an optimization problem. We're attempting to find the best path. Yeah, it's unreasonable to consider everything. Heuristic, yep. And yeah. So for these next two check for understandings, oops. In which of the following situations is it most appropriate? So where would we use a best solution, right? So again, a heuristic's gonna be used where it's really just so much. It's overwhelming to go and visit and try and look at every tiny detail. So maybe if I said to count every E in a phone book, you guys don't even know what a phone book is. Count every E in a dictionary, maybe, it, uh, whatever. But it's just a ton of stuff. That could be overwhelming. It would take so much time. So that's what you want to consider for something like that. And what's this? Problems that are undecided, undecidable and algorithms that are unreasonable both touch on the limits of the kinds of computing that a computer can accomplish. In your own words, explain the difference between undecidable problems and unreasonable time. Oh, that's a great question. So what's the difference between a undecidable, something that you can't make a choice on, and unreasonable time? I would say, could the salesman, could you technically find the best way to travel to those houses? If you consider all 10 billion, would you know the best? Well, I mean, that would take a lot of time to consider, but would you? So is that problem completely impossible or is it just not really within the realm of reasonability? So think about things like this when answering that question. Um, yeah, this is really cool content. Good luck.